if you watched my review, somebody else's review, or in fact, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings, The Rings, The Rings of Power yourself, or even if you didn't, you probably already knew for a long time that Sauron was Hellbrand all along, even though the websites and the channels out there were trying to convince you that it could be somebody else. The leaks came out ages ago. It was all reported by bigger channels like Nerd Rotic and people like that, so thank you very much to them and whoever leaked it to them. And of course, you know, it was no surprise whatsoever, even in the context of the show, everybody could see that Halbram was the one character who was pushing the plot forward and was very, very interested in forges and getting himself increased power without looking like he was trying to do it. It was about the only good thing in the show, and so I guess if there is any interest at all in a second season of this dumpster fire, then one of the things that will be the most interesting to whatever 10 fans are remaining of it will be the fate of Halbrand and what he will do next. So it looks like we're getting some answers out of the showrunners. Of course, every word that comes out of their mouths is either a lie or completely incompetent. So uh, your guess is as good as mine, but let's look anyway. Hello and welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there? And if you're enjoying the content, I would very much appreciate it if you would support the channel by hitting that like button and maybe even subscribing. How do you feel about that? Hopefully good. Let's go to Bounding Into Comics then and take a look at this little article that we've got here. Thank you very much. The Rings of Power showrunners tease Sauron's character in season two. Interesting that that's the thing they're talking about the most because it's clear that he was the most popular character, which of course is a spectacular failure on the part of the writers, but whatever. Apparently he's, quote, complexly, I don't like that word, evil like Tony Soprano or Walter White. Okay, we'll try and avoid any spoilers for Breaking Bad here for anybody who's watching and still hasn't seen that show, if there is anybody at all. Following the absolutely embarrassing finale to The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power's first season, and its full realization of the incarnation of Sauron, showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay have teased the Dark Lord's character as being complexly evil in the vein of such iconic television characters as Tony Soprano or Walter White. Well, yeah, okay. That, that would be, if, you, if they could pull that off, I'd be amazed. Speaking to The Hollywood Reporter in light of the season ending reveal that Galadriel's <laughs> reveal like anyone didn't know come on the Galadriel's companion Halbrand was actually the black one in disguise all along <laughs> Interesting choice of words there McKay explained that while Tolkien's version of the villain was an all-encompassing evil that everyone is afraid of and is so powerful It doesn't even have to be manifested physically and Jackson's cinematic interpretation was an image of an eye. He's the eye on the tower. He and Payne felt Sauron should be a character in his own right. Well, I mean, you've pretty much got no choice if he's a man at this point. There has to be some characterization. Personally, I would have had him disappear completely so that you could bring something else in and um, build up the other characters without them all having their focus stolen by Halbrand. Well, Sauron, I guess we'll just call him now. Any case... Um, we wanted to study the currents running with him in a way that hopefully would reward audiences as they follow him moving toward, forward Sorry, as he becomes the Dark Lord. I mean, his evil should be overt later in the story when he is just the Dark Lord and he's put all his pieces in place. At this stage, he would have been Anatar, who is tricking everybody, so, you know... I don't know why they didn't just use Anatar, except for the fact that it probably would have clued everybody in immediately to what's going on, and I guess they wanted to have a surprise for our viewers who who knew all about the books in the first place. Of course, that's pretty insulting to Tolkien too, but I don't know. There's no correct answer here. All I'll say is Halbrand was the best thing about the show. Any case, you know him as you now know him as a person outside the name Sauron. Well, that's certainly true. In some ways, we wanted to do an origin story for Sauron. Well, that is what you've accomplished, if that's what your goal was. We didn't want to make a show that was about the hunt for Sauron, but we love the idea of Sauron as a deceiver who could hopefully deceive some of the audience. This is not the same thing that they were saying in earlier interviews at all. I think that they know full well they screwed up and made Hullbrand the most relatable character of all of them, the best performance of all of them, and now they're trying to say, well, that was our plan the whole time. Ha 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 ha. You fell for it. Yeah, right. Jumping off from his partner's point, Payne then interjected, that's something that Milton does in Paradise Lost that we talked about a lot, where he makes Satan a really compelling character. 
In some ways, he's the first anti-hero when he's compelling and you can't take your eyes off of him, he opined. Milton did that on purpose because he wants you to fall along with Adam and Eve. He wants Satan to be so persuasive that he also seduces the reader and you're unconsciously won over so you perceive your own fallenness and your need for redemption. Okay, I still don't believe for a second that this was the intention of the show. I don't. Not at all. They would have said something like that. They would have advertised it like that. Further elaborating on their approach to the villain, Payne detailed in Tolkien, Sauron is a deceiver, and we know that in the Second Age he appears in fair form. So what if he sneaks up on you, is able to get you to sympathize with him, and get you to be on board with him, so that once you actually realize who he is, he's already got his hooks in you. Okay, sure. So it's not just as easy as, this person is evil, I'm going to back away, because you've already formed some level of attachment to him. What if he could get the audience to go through a similar journey? Well, that's very good, but of course we must remember Galadriel had no such pseudo-romantic attachment to Sauron in Tolkien, and that is one of the worst things that they've tried to pull off here. There were people on Twitter standing for the two of them. Ugh, why do people always do this stuff? It's worse than the Raylos. Anyway, turning to the specific handling of Sauron in the series' eventual second season, Payne asserted, Season 1 opens with, Who is Galadriel? Where did she come from? What did she suffer? Why is she driven? We're doing the same thing with Sauron in Season 2. Oh, great, so they're going to ruin Sauron then, because apparently they don't know how to make a sympathetic character when they're trying to. We fill in all the missing pieces, he assured. During the interview to a close, McKay attempted to spark any sort of interest in their series' future by drawing comparisons between the Dark Lord and a number of more popular, quote, evil characters, declaring Sauron can now just be Sauron, like Tony Soprano or Walter White. He's evil, but complexly evil. He was always complexly evil because he was a pupil of Morgoth who wanted to destroy, and he instead wanted to rule, and he did so through manipulation, corruption, and, and all kinds of ways like that. Now... That is uh, already a, a quite an intricate villain. So when they, but of course, by the time of Lord of the Rings and, and The Hobbit, well, less in The Hobbit, of course, he is just exerting an evil pressure over the world because that's all he has left to win and still so completely believes that he is right. So there's that. Uh, we felt like if we did that in season one, he'd overshadow everything else he did. So the first season is like Batman Begins and The Dark Knight is the next movie. Which You're just quoting things that are better than this show, aren't you? It's pathetic. I don't know. I, I think that Hulbrand was the best character in the show, the most compelling character in the show, and pretty much the only one most people liked. Um, I don't think that was intentional. I think, I think it just sort of came out that way. I think Galadriel was very much supposed to be the good guy here and when they realized that they had written the most sympathetic character in Sauron that they are now backpedaling and trying to make good on that so we can only see what happens for here let me know if you think I'm right or if you agree with me you might not I'm always happy to hear a different opinion or someone who just agrees with me as well it's totally fine um, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to help me to grow thank you very much I will be back with another video for you very very soon but until then see you next time